I think it's on. Okay. So uh, what's up? Mortgage Rate Monday. Today is September 26th. Doing this on my computer today because for some reason my phone won't let me record more than like 20 seconds. But uh, anyway, uh, I saw something cool today. It was uh, conventional mortgage rates up over 7% for the first time. Um, a couple of lenders we work with. So that's cool. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with or not very little to do with the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates last week. Um, it has to do with the bond market crashing. Now, I have a theory, and I say theory because I am not an economist or a financial advisor, um, but I'm just going to explain my understanding of the way the bond market works. So basically, in its most simplest form, a bond is a promise to pay money. So when a company, for, for, per se, wants to raise money, they can issue stock which they don't always like to do because they have to give up some control of the company, or they can issue bonds, which just means they would say, hey, Mr. Investor, we want to raise some money. Um, if you buy this bond from us, we will pay it back over the period of whatever length this bond is, three, five, seven, 10 years, whatever it is. And we'll pay you a little bit of interest on top and for some profit. And that's the, the, the investor's premium, right? So in an economy where the number one goal of pretty much every country is controlling inflation. And historically, the only way that's been successful is through recessions. Then investors aren't really quick to jump on bonds when they know their premiums are not going to be very good, aka their profit. So you have an influx of corporate bonds coming in. You have investors dumping bonds in the bond market. You have governments dumping bonds in the bond market because they were buying them during the pandemic to stimulate the economy. So all of that relates to an increase in supply, a decrease in demand, which obviously supply and demand is the most basic driving force of anything. So the bond market's crashing. Yields are lower, which means um, rates are higher, just kind of how it works. So... You know, a lot of people are comparing this time to 2008. I've been doing a lot of research lately, just, you know, going back to that time and trying to figure out patterns and stuff like that. You know, again, I am not, I'm not a professor. I am not an expert. I wouldn't call myself an expert on the economy, but it sure seems like what we're going into is going to be a lot more similar to the Great Depression of like the 30s than 2008. We're, we're talking more of like a, a worldwide economic turmoil, not just like a, a more localized one like we saw in 08. But anyway, so what do you do? Like, what do you do from here, I guess? So um, if you own a home and the next phase of your life plan would include selling that home to upgrade to a bigger home, I would consider maybe staying if that's possible and just waiting to see what happens. Because yes, your current home has a lot of equity, but you would be taking on an added layer of risk in an environment that is not always very risk friendly, um, you know, if the worst case scenario happens. If you own a home and the next phase of your life is to sell a big home to move into a smaller home or a retirement community or something like that, then I would seriously consider maybe doing something sooner rather than later because that person still has peak equity levels. So you could take advantage of that and maybe pay cash for the next place or you know just wipe all of your debt clean. Um, you have a lot to gain right now still. The last individual, or I mean, there's more individuals than that, but we'll, another individual, the, the renter that is looking to buy, um, for you, I just say, be careful. You know, yeah, renting kind of sucks. Rents are still going up. But um, the way things are shaping up, okay, let me back up. There's a stat right now, which I've verified, that the mortgage payment for a $400,000 house is now $1,000 a month more expensive than it was a year ago. And that's on the low end too, by the way. Um, so to find a house that you're going to actually like you may have to stretch yourself financially. And this goes back into the conversation of 
how much risk is too much risk in an environment where the economy could collapse and a lot of people lose their jobs, right? So yeah, renting might suck, but getting foreclosed on sucks worse. It double sucks. So just be careful. Be careful who you get your information from and don't push the limits more than what you're comfortable with. That's all I can say there. Investors, there's a saying that, um, I forget where I heard it from, but the saying goes, don't try to catch a falling knife. Uh, what that means is you don't necessarily want to get in when things are on their way down. You want to kind of wait till there's a bottom and things are starting to rebound and you can ride the wave back up. Now, again, everyone has their own tolerance for risk. And, uh, you know, if you're a long-term buy and hold person and you can get a good deal paying cash, um, you know, there's always opportunity out there. It just kind of depends on your own personal risk tolerance. But anyway, uh, that's it for this week. Like I said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, just we don't really know what's coming, but it, um, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, just try to make good decisions. I just want everyone to be safe. So uh, we'll see you guys on the next one if I can figure out how to turn off Zoom. All right, there we go.